Gibson Assembly. With SnapGene, it's easy to simulate Gibson Assembly. This method allows multiple fragments to be joined efficiently without using restriction enzymes. I'll simulate the assembly of a tagged gene in a mammalian expression vector called PCDNA6 MICHIS-A. The gene will be inserted downstream of the CMV promoter, and I want to include the MIC and hexahistidine tags that are encoded by the vector. To take a closer look at this region, I click to select the multi-cloning site, or MCS, and then click on this tab to switch to Sequence View. I want to insert my gene fusion in place of the MCS, but I want to end just upstream of the MIC tag instead of all the way at the end of the MCS. So I create a new selection by clicking upstream of the Hindi 3 site, then dragging to the position just before the MIC tag. To simulate the assembly reaction, I choose Gibson Assembly from the Actions menu. I then choose Insert Two Fragments because the inserted fusion gene will be assembled from two source plasmids. The Gibson Assembly window opens to the Vector tab, which shows the plasmid that was visible when I chose the command. Here in the box on the right are instructions for the procedure that I'll follow. The first instruction is to select the region that is to be replaced in the vector. I've already done that, and the selected region is preserved in the Gibson assembly window, so I can move on. Now I click on the first fragment tab. I plan to fuse a snap tag upstream of my gene, so as the source file I choose psnapf, which encodes the snap tag as shown here in pink. To get a closer look, I switch to Sequence View and scroll down. The start codon of the SNAP tag is embedded in a COSAC sequence for efficient translation. That sequence is ACCATGG, and I want to include it in my expression construct, so I click to insert the cursor upstream of the A. When I scroll down, I see that this glycine is the last codon of the snap tag, so I shift-click on the codon to create my selection. To choose the gene that will be fused to the snap tag, I switch to the second fragment tab. The gene is called SEC16B, and it's in a plasmid called PFLAG SEC16B. I switch back to map view to see an overview of this plasmid. SEC16B is the plum-colored feature. When I switch back to Sequence View and scroll, I see the start codon of SEC16B, so I click to select it. Then I scroll down to the end of the gene. I don't want the stop codon, so I shift-click on the last codon, which is cysteine 101060 I got lucky because both fragments were in the right orientation relative to my vector. If one or both of the fragment orientations needed to be flipped, I could have used the orientation controls here on the right. Now that I have chosen the pieces that will be assembled, I'll ask SnapGene to design suitable primers. Following the directions in the white box, I switch now to the Product tab and press Choose Overlapping PCR Primers. Here I have some options. The target melting temperature, or TM, for the PCR primers is set at 60 degrees Celsius. The PCR primers will be extended to create the overlapping ends that permit Gibson assembly. By default, SnapGene follows the guidelines from New England Biolabs. The overlap is between 15 and 25 bases with a target TM of about 50 degrees Celsius. Some protocols for Gibson assembly call for a fixed overlap of 40 bases. If I wanted to use that approach, I would specify an overlap length of 40 to 40 bases, and then I would set this parameter as the default for future simulations. For now, I'm sticking with the existing parameters, so I click Choose Primers. In the overview at the bottom, I see a summary of the assembly reaction. The fragments overlap with each other and with the vector, and the overlapping regions are between 16 and 22 base pairs. I switch to map view once again to see the final product. As expected, the snap tag has been inserted upstream of SEC16B. To specify the name for this plasmid, I click at the lower right and type PCDNA6 snap SEC16B. Now I'm ready to go, so I press Assemble. A new window appears for my assembled product. The automatically designed primers are shown in purple. To confirm that everything worked correctly, I switch to Sequence View. 
After the CMV promoter is the SNAP tag with its COSAC sequence. I see one of the primers that was used to amplify the vector and an overlapping primer that was used to amplify the SNAP tag. With further scrolling, I see that immediately after the SNAP tag is SEC16B. Immediately after SEC16B is the MIC tag, which is in frame with the hexahistidine tag, which is followed by the stop codon. When I click on the History tab, I see a graphical overview of the procedure. Finally, when I click on the Primers tab, I see all six primers listed. I want to order these primers, so I'll export them to a text file. For that purpose, I choose Select All from the Edit menu. Then I open the Primers menu and choose Export Selected Primers. I'll save the text file to my desktop. Now when I open the exported file, I see that the primer names and sequences are ready to copy into an online order form. That's all there is to it. If you're already a fan of Gibson Assembly, you'll love how Snapgene takes the effort out of designing the primers. If you haven't tried Gibson Assembly, Snapgene can show you how easy it is to create the constructs you need.